vessel to get your word out, Father, and let me be step aside and, and you do all the talking and all the work. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I'm going to recap just a little bit. The gift of prophecy. What we will learn, and we've already done this. We've already um, done what is prophecy. Give me a definition of prophecy, somebody. A definition of prophecy. What is it? Communication mm -hmm. between one another. Uh huh. God. From who? Remember last from week God. we said from, from God, God to us, to the person that God wants to communicate with. Amen? Um, so we everybody understand that? Any questions about that? Any questions about hearing from God? Or am I not able to hear from God? You know, everybody can hear from God. It's not just certain people that can hear from God. Amen? So it's a communic... Yes? Okay. That's confusing because uh, it says hearing. Some of us think we can hear his voice. But isn't it you feel it? Feel him? I think it's different ways. It's different Spirit. ways. See, the gifts feel are him? diversity. That's so, some people hear it. Oh, okay. Um, I don't know. And then some people feel it. Right? Because I, saw, I heard you word. say something that Because it's it. diversity. But you said you feel it from the gut up. You feel it. I have heard of people actually um, hearing God's I don't know if it's God, hearing a voice, I don't know if it's God or an angel or whoever yeah, it is. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And then I have myself feel it. Yes. Yeah, I feel. I feel it. You it's feel. like you feel what's right and you feel what's wrong. Yes, that's what I think. Uh huh. So. But if God doesn't speak to you, some people do hear an audible voice. Exactly. Yes. Um, I, I can't tell you right off. So um, that, that is possible. It, it, it is because being with God, I think it's our our senses. We we touch, we feel, we hear, mm -hmm. um, all of those. What is it? Six senses, mm -hmm. and I think that's who God is. Okay. So He can do whatever He wants to do to to <coughs> speak to us. He can tell you, um, go to the Bible. I want you to read certain yes, certain, certain chapters. Yes. Uh, he can tell you. Well, you know what. Um, and I don't know how you'll hear it. Through You can hear it through the word. You can hear it through somebody prophesying to you. Or you can just hear it by, feel it by the discernment that God has given, that gift of discernment to you. So there's several different ways that we can hear from God. And there's probably more ways too. But those are the three ways that I wanted you to know. How did you so, hear from him when he told you about be careful about walking on the rocks? It was just in my head. That's right. It was in my head. But it was him speaking. It was him speaking to, you, to me. I do believe Speaking to that. your spirit. And what I did is I went right ahead and walked on those rocks. And I didn't listen. Well, because I had my baby with me, you know. And she wanted to go out on the rocks. So what does Gigi do but take her out there on the rocks? And being spoken to, don't do that, Brenda. And I did it anyway. So when we do that, sometimes we get ourselves in some trouble. So we have to be really careful. And, and sometimes it can just be a moment like that that God speaks to you. It may be just a word that he speaks to you. But take okay. heed of that word. Mm -hmm. Because God is speaking to you something. Right. And how do we... So anyway, so we know what prophecy... What is prophecy? A form of communication from who? From God to us, to you. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yes. By the Holy Spirit? By the Holy yes. Spirit. Because you know they're one. Mm -hmm. So Holy Spirit speaks to you. We say Holy Spirit, we say God, we say Jesus. But you see, they're all one. Everything works together with the Lord Jesus. Everything. It's a circle. We're studying the gifts of the, uh, of the Spirit. And when you get right down and study that, everything works together. Everything. Because God has everything in unity. Amen? Is that not right? Yes, right. Everything is done in unity in God's world. So I think last week I spoke about if you want to get into God's world, do you remember what I said about what you had to do? We live in another 
he's in another dimension than what we're in, okay? We're in the world. He's someplace else. But we have the opportunity to be able to hear from God and to speak from him, to him. And I think that that is just awesome. How do we do that? We yeah. talked about it last week. Through the word and study in and pray. And, and be what? Remember I said the, about the hair dryer? If we don't put our hair dryer, if we're not plugged in all the way, mm -hmm. then we're not going to get anything. If we put that hair dryer plug in halfway, there's going to be trouble, right? There's not going to be, any, if you plug it in all the way, it's going to work correctly. The same thing with the shaver, with the men. If you don't put that in all the way, then you're not going to get the shave that you should get. If we don't put our plug in to Jesus, then we're not going to get the opportunities that he wants us to have. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm yes, not talking yes. to you. Everybody getting that? So we know that we can speak to Jesus and he speaks to us. And that is called what? What are we studying? Prophecy. Prophecy. Why do we prophesy? Edify, exhort, and comfort. That's right. I think all the gifts are for that. Every gift that we have is to edify the church, to comfort people, and to exhort. Every gift, every gift, everything that comes from God is good. Nothing is bad that comes from the Lord. Our correction, yes, they will, he will correct us, but he will correct us in a way that is loving and that is the proper way. So anytime we prophesy, we edify, whom do we edify? Church. 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 Who's the church? We are. we are. We are. Amen. So prophecy is to edify the church. The church is the people of God. Amen? Amen. So, okay, so we're going to go on. The next one is, where do we prophesy? Everywhere. Everywhere. I have several examples of prophecy, and we're going to go to those in Scripture to prove some things because I don't want you to just take my word for it. I want you to uh, know right from the word of God that this is truth. Okay? Moses prophesied right out in the open with all of his people. Yep. There was prophecies done in the temple in the New Testament. We're going to get into all of that. Prophecy done to one-on-one -on -one, um, in the church, at the home, wherever you are. We can prophesy just about any place as long as we stay connected with the Lord Jesus. Now, if we're not connected with him, I want you to understand that this is not going to be, you cannot do that. You have to stay connected with him so that you hear God's voice. When do we prophesy? Okay, Only when God speaks to you. Okay, yes. Only when God says, okay, listen up now. I've got something for you to, uh, to uh, uh, hear. I want... There's a person over here that's sick, and I want you to go and give them a word and tell them that everything's going to be okay. Okay? If I were to give somebody a word and say, you know what, in the next three hours, the Lord showed me that when you walk out of this place, you're going to have a flat tire. No. Yes or no? No. no. Okay. The Lord showed me that when you walk out of this place, and I'm saying I'm prophesying right now over, over you. The Lord showed me that when you get home, that your best little animal's going to be dead. No. No. Tell me an example of a prophecy. That, what kind of prophecy? It lifts up. Instead okay, of there we go, because we go right back to it, it what does prophecy down. do? It lifts. Anything in the church, anything in the church should edify people, should uh, make them feel good, should should uh, lift them up. And comfort them. And comfort them. No, I'm going to tell you, I can tell you, okay, I know you're sick. I know that you're, you're who was it, your, <coughs> sister, your daughter-in-law? Your daughter-in-law sick, Sister Judy. But God's going to take care of that sickness. And what did he do? He did. Because we depend upon, upon him. 
We can't depend upon the doctors. That was proven yesterday. Even though doctors are good, don't get me wrong, doctors are good. But our dependency comes upon God. So when we prophesy, God only speaks um, in th things that will exhort, comfort, and edify us. Okay, my next thing here is how do we prophesy? Uh, how do we prophesy? Meaning, if I were to pro you prophesy on the level that God has given us, okay? I am not an office. Pro I'm not a prophet of the office. Neither are you. But sometimes we prophesy over people. If I were to go to my aunt and and say, Aunt Anna, the Lord has given me a word for you, a prophecy for you. I go to her as an aunt. See what I mean? As a person that I respect, a person that I love, and I would go to her that way. I wouldn't go to her in a way that uh, makes me uh, better, feel better than anybody else. I wouldn't go to her in a way that is ornery. If I were to go to my pastor and say, um, Pastor, um, I feel like the Lord has given me a word for you. I go very humbly to them. I don't go proud. You know what? It reminded me when I was uh, reading over these things and, and stuff. It reminded me of a proud person. You you know what that guy said? Pride comes before a fall. Is that right? That's mm -hmm. right. Am I saying that right? Okay. So when I was reading and studying about prophecy and so many people say, I am a prophet and I, you know, and I am a good prophet and blah, 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 blah. God does not want us to be that way. And the Lord showed me this peacock. Okay, I saw it in my head. This peacock would just, he, at times, his feathers just flourish. They're beautiful. I'm not saying they're not. They're beautiful. But that peacock is saying, I'm the best male here. I'm the best one. You see all my feathers? That peacock is proud, was being proud. And God spoke to me and said, I don't want you to be proud like that. Mm -hmm. I want you to be an humble person. And I'm not saying anything bad about those peacocks because they're beautiful. That's just an example of how God showed me how people do in the prophecy world or any place else in this world. They want to show their feathers. And you know what? When you do that, you the Word of God says for us to be humble in anything that we do. And we'll say, yes, we know that, we know that, we know that, but are we truly humble? Are we? The Bible says Moses was the most humble man in the whole world at that time. But we all know what it is. Not being, uh, not putting our feathers up like that peacock does. Not putting our chest out like some people want to do. And if they can use good big words, not using big words, that, that you don't understand, that's not going to help anybody at all. If I were to use this, choose to use these great big giant words to Sister Judy that she'd never heard of before, that's not going to help her at all. The Word of God says for us to be humble and come to Jesus and be humble. Amen. You see, too many people think because I have this church or because I can prophesy or because I can do this or because I can do that, that um, I am better than anybody else. And you've gone into churches, and I'm not t trying to talk about anybody. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just tell giving you an example of where you couldn't even get to the pastor. Or, or the people think that the pastor is up higher than what we are. You know what? We're on the same level. It's the same spirit that dwells in that pastor. He's been called to be a pastor, but it's the same spirit that dwells in that pastor that dwells in you and I. Amen. Amen. There's no difference except a calling on your life. You can't be a prophet either unless you're, you've called God by who? Who calls you? God first. And a lot of times the pastors will recognize that maybe you have a prophet in your church and maybe he will come to you and talk to you about it and 
it will just affirm what the Holy Spirit has spoken to you. See, people's going to know. If you're in tune with God, people's going to know a gift that you have. You will, because you discern that gift. You know about that gift. You see, we're trying to get closer and closer to God so that we know what God wants in our life. Does he want you to uh, prophesy? Does he want you to speak in tongues? Does he want you to have interpretations? Does he want you to have the gifts of healing? He wants you to have all of those things, but he gives them as he wants to. But if you're afraid to ask God for a gift of prophecy, a gift of healing, a gift of miracles, you're never gonna get it. How many of you are afraid to say, God, if you want me to prophesy, I will. I want to hear your voice. Because prophecy will edify the church, will exhort the church, and will comfort so many people. Amen? Amen. So are there any questions right now? Any questions at all? We're going to try to answer them if we can. So we know what prophecy is, the definition of prophecy? Edify, or Exactly. Why do we, pro why do we prophesy? Uh, what is prophecy? Now, it's different than why do we prophesy. Okay. What is prophecy? From God to you to another person. The communication that we have. And why do we prophesy? To edify, to comfort, to exhort. When do we prophesy? We can prophesy anywhere, anywhere when God speaks to you. And you know, when when a when a message is there, usually the Holy Spirit quietens. It'll quieten things. anybody down. Now you can you can prophesy to someone like after church. Yeah. Because we have to be careful about where, how, when. Yes. We have yeah. to be careful of those things. I couldn't stand up here while pastor's preaching a message and say, Sister, I got a message from you and I'm going to prophesy over you right now. That is out of order, out of order. big time. So if you listen to the Holy Spirit, he's going to tell you when, how, and where to do it. He might say, wait till you get home and then call her. He might say, wait till she gets in the car and she's all alone and then speak that word to her. Yeah, and you want something? Are you just resting your hand? Okay. So, you know, we have to be cautious of where, how, when, and um, what we say to that person. Do you agree with me? Amen. So, we can pro prophesy anywhere. And when do we prophesy? Somebody tell me when. That's exactly it. That's the thing right there. We can't just come up with a prophecy on our own. You know, you have the to. The Spirit has to lead us. Yes, the Spirit of God has to lead us into that. Um, and a lot of people will want to do that. You know, a lot of people will want to say, that's why their feathers come up, and say, I've got a word for you. But it's not from God, it's from them. And I mean, a good word is good. Like, you know, we can say, I love you. God said, He's, I love you, and stuff like that. But when it comes to prophecy, you better be very careful, and you better make sure it comes from God. That's right, amen. Mm -hmm. Because if not, there's, you know what? There's false prophets out there. Many people think just because they can uh, um, um, predict the future, that they're a prophet, and let me tell you, that's wrong because there's magician, there's those, the, the magicians, there's the mediums, uh, there's the uh, all of those. I, I don't even know how many there are, but I because I don't mess with that stuff, so I don't know about it. There's astrology, right? Yes. And they make they can predict the future, and I have scripture to prove that, but it's not of God. Of the devil. It's not of the Holy Spirit. So we have to come, first come into um, knowing the gifts of the Spirit, 
knowing how to use them, when to use them, and uh, not be afraid to use them when you know God the Father has spoken that to you. Is prophecy just for special people? No. no. I'm going to tell you no. No. Because in God's eyes, we're all special. That's right. And, you know, Paul said, I wish that you would all prophesy. Yeah. And Moses told his people in the camp, I wished all of you guys would prophesy. So, you know, that is a gift that uh, we need to pray for. And number seven, can women prophesy? Now, we have this thing in the, in the church that um, a lot of people think that women can't have a say in the church. That women can't preach, women can't, I don't know, maybe they can teach, but they can't preach, they can't do a lot of things in the church. A lot, of, you know what, a lot of religions still believe that. Oh, yes, and definitely a woman can't preach, and definitely a woman can't prophesy. I'm here to tell you different. Acts, I hope I got this scripture right. Acts 2 and 17, let's go there. What's the scripture say? And it shall come to pass. Are you all there? Did you all yes. go to there? I want you to yes. mark this because this is proven, ladies, that we can prophesy and that we can work in the church. Acts 2 and 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon men. All. Oh. <laughs> Just upon men? No, it says upon all flesh and your sons and your who? Daughters. Daughters. Now, to me, a daughter is a girl, yes. okay? Shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Right there. Anybody comes to anything in the church? Somebody tells you a woman can't do this, you go to that scripture right there. The, the bottom part, and young men shall see visions, and your men, old men shall dream dreams. I, can you explain that a little bit? I know it's saying what it's saying, but I've never, I've never heard of much of that. I just wondered. I've heard of visions, but not of the dream dreams, you know. Well, it's it's just simple. It's just saying what it says. Yeah. That they're going to be dreamers. I believe there's dreamers. Who was the dreamer in the Bible? Uh, well, remember too, some of the kings, like Solomon. Kings, yeah. He would get people to come interpret his dreams. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, yes. Okay, so there, that, that's what he's talking about. That's what he's talking about. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. There's going to definitely I be dreamers. I had never heard that before. And there's going to be, uh, uh, what's it say? Uh, the, your young men shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. All given by the Holy Spirit. Yes. Nothing else but the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Yeah. I, I so, really want, ladies. I just yes. want to remind everyone that all dreams don't come from God. No, no that's but, true. But get, God can give you a dream, and that He can use that to talk to you or to talk to uh, exactly you to, to know, give to, to somebody else. Okay. Yeah, um, we know someone that they think every dream is is from God, and it's not. Not every dream is from the Lord. Now we want to. We know that some dreams God does give us dreams. He may caution us in a dream. He may speak to us in something. I want to tell you what happened to me one time. A long time ago. You guys can laugh if you want. I don't care. But I was in church at, at, at Santa Nella, and we were singing, We exalt thee, we exalt thee, O Lord. And I did not know what the word exalt meant. But I was singing that song with everything that was within me because I knew it had to be something good. Well, all day I put that thought in my mind and I never did go to the dictionary. I never did. But I went to sleep that night and I woke up the next morning and the Lord had given me the definition of exalt. And it was simple. And it was in like a word in my dream. It said exalt equals to lift up. God can work with you in dreams and in visions. When my um, my real mother-in-law, she's a sweet lady, I loved her very much. When she was going on to be with the Lord, we were in the convalescent hospital over there at New Bethany, and it was the, the night before she passed away. And I was sitting there with her, me and my daughter, Elena, 
and um, I dozed off for, I thought it was just for a few minutes, but um, it was long enough for the Lord to show me this dream. And this dream was, um, I saw the gates of heaven opening, okay? And they were just opening very slowly like this, and someone was walking in, and at that gate, someone was waiting for her. It was a young boy. I knew right then when I woke up that my mother-in-law was going home to be with the Lord. Because he gives you dreams. Now like Harv said, not all dreams are from God. And I believe there's dreams that are uh, from the enemy. I believe he can scare you in your dreams. I believe he can lie to you and say, well, if you do this, this is what's going to happen to you. But you know, we put our trust in whom? Not the enemy, but the Lord in everything that we do, everything that we speak, every place that we go. We need to have our ears open and listen for God. If I would have listened yesterday, I wouldn't have this bad thing on my head. My nose wouldn't be bruised and under my and my knees wouldn't be all scraped up. But I decided to do what I wanted to do. And I was very lucky I wasn't hurt any worse than what I was. Because I could have been hurt a lot. So we've got to open our ears to, um, how did we get on that? But anyway, women can prophesy because the word of God says so. Okay, let's go to Genesis 3 and 14. Okay, 3 and 14. And the Lord said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon the belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between the seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. What is that a prophecy of? <coughs> the first prophecy of... <coughs> Jesus Christ. Yes. Hi, sister. It's good to see you. Hi, Karen. Amen. So you're going to notice all in these, in these, that's the first, I want you to mark that down, Genesis 3 and 14, the first prophecy of Jesus Christ. Amen. Luke 2, 23 through 32. Oh, it's right below. It's okay. 25, honey. Okay. 25. It's, okay. It's 25. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him, and it was revealed unto him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had, had seen the Lord Jesus. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then took him he him up in his arms and blessed him and said, Lord, now that thy servant depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. See the prophecy in there? Yeah. Feel it? See the prophecy in there? That was Simeon. So there's many, many prophecies in the Bible that talks about Jesus, that prophesies about Jesus Christ. So we'll get to those next week. I hope we can uh, wind it up next week. But so today we talked about, just remember, what is prophecy? A form of communication from God to you, to somebody else. Um, why do we prophesy? To edit, to exhort, to lift up. Remember these? Yeah. Where do we prophesy? We can prophesy anywhere. Amen. We don't have to be here in church to prophesy. Uh, when do we? When God speaks to us to yeah. prophesy for someone. Only when God speaks, not when my husband speaks to me or I speak to myself. It's only about God. How do we prophesy? on the level that God has given us, okay? We need to be humble. We need to go to that person and say, I've got something for you, but we can't put our feathers out like the peacock, right? We have to go to them humbly. Is prophecy for special people? No. Prophecy is for someone that wants to prophesy and God said, okay, I'm going to grant you this gift. And you have to desire that gift. 
Can women prophesy? Yes. yes. Okay. Yes, we can. All can prophesy. Everybody can prophesy. And prophecy is a great word. Prophecy is great. And um, God is so good. And we, he wants us to be open to his word. He wants our ears to be open. He wants our hearts to be open. He wants us to hear from him so that we can tell other people so that the church of Christ can grow, so that the church of Christ can be edified, so that the church of Christ can comfort um, other people when they're having hard times. Amen? Amen. So, Paul said, if you to pray for these gifts, but he said, desire prophecy. Because they all lift up, they all exhort, they all comfort, but desire prophecy. Amen. Amen.